Oh, gotta be careful. The room is super messy, so I'm gonna just try and nope, that's not it. Scooch in. Okay, we're yeah, we're we're in close enough. So modding in this hobby is pretty core to the hobby itself. The modifying of Nerf blasters and other branded blasters, and I don't really enjoy that. And that's okay. So let's talk about it. There's no denying that the foundation of this hobby was and still is the modifying of toy foam blasters. And while that is a fantastic aspect of this hobby, it has grown into something much, much larger that encompasses many different aspects of the hobby. And for those that are getting into the hobby and starting to learn about all of it, I want you to understand that it's okay to not feel like you're super into that one aspect of it. Um, while modding is cool and interesting and I love all the talented people that are actively engaging in modifying blasters in either ways they've seen online or new and fun creative ways that they've thought up they haven't seen people do yet. I love that. It's so interesting to me. But it's not for me. I'm not good at it. It doesn't capture that uh, level of passion that it does for many others and that's okay because if our hobby was just monotone one aspect and one aspect only it would not be nearly as interesting or engaging to the many people that do take part in it now enough talking about what the hobby is and encompasses and kind of broad strokes and all of that i enjoy the playing aspect of this hobby going out to games having fun with friends, making new friends, uh, having ridiculous things happen that make for great fun stories after the fact. And that to me is the most engaging part. Now, I also do like the kind of like piecing together a loadout and finding what works best for me and thinking about that kind of stuff as well, which is another aspect. And those aspects bring me a lot of joy when it comes to this hobby. Now, when I first started, there wasn't a whole lot available like there is now for people that may be similar to me. So I got by with what I could, usually like uh, a pre-modded blaster from Orange Mod Works or uh, eventually a drop-in kit for my Strife and Rapid Strike from Blaster Tech years ago. The things that allowed me to do the most with the least amount of actual modding input necessary. Both because I didn't have the knowledge, expertise, but also because I found it stressful and not fun. Now as time has gone on, I have dabbled in modding and have learned how to do things and have some basic knowledge so I can function because if I was going to make videos about certain things, I had to be able to understand, you know, how they function and, and how you put them together and what can go wrong with something. But those things still stress me out. And while it's not maybe as much as it is, it can be something that's like, yeah, I need to put that together. I really, I need to, I need to wire that cage up. but. Hey, it's a means to an end, not the main aspect for me. So why am I talking about this now? Well, because I think we're potentially at the beginning of a really good period of growth for our hobby. Potentially. And that's because we have so many more options becoming available to us for players, modders, hobbyists of all different kinds in our community. And that to me is fantastic. It's something that we should really be celebrating. The ability to uh, pick up, whether it's a stock blaster from the store and then buy either components to mod something yourself or bring an idea to life or a drop-in kit that allows you to just say, I want this to do this, but I don't want to do it all myself. I just want to put it in the blaster, close it up and, and be relatively easy to do. Two full-blown complete blasters, which is my personal favorite because I mess things up a lot when I'm putting things together and building them and modding and all that, so if someone else far more competent than I can do it for me, I will. I, I yeah, I'll pay you extra. Please, please do. Thank you. So as we continue to see more of these fully fleshed out blasters and options and platforms that people can build off of, that's only a positive for us. More options and more competition between those options drives a whole lot of good 
for this hobby as we continue to grow numbers. Now, obviously, yes, with the pandemic this last year plus, it has stifled things immensely in terms of uh, games and growth on that end. But hopefully as things open back up in more places and everyone's able to get back out, we will start to see that growth again. And with this influx of new blasters, both from community members and companies, both within the hobby and uh, with out the hobby or outside of the hobby, uh, we are seeing a wider variety in uh, form, function, aesthetics, all of that. And uh, now some of these I have made my personal opinion known in previous videos about realistic looking blasters at my events. Many of you did not like that and that's the way it is. Things will shake out how they shake out and we will, as a community, will have to figure out how to move forward. But my point is that more options for more players from the entry level, I don't have time to mod, I don't want to mod, give me a full blaster to, I want to do every little thing on my blaster and have every single nuance exactly the way I want it. That's fantastic. I think it's great that we're growing in such a way that we're starting to get more options for a variety of price points for hobbyists. So whether you want something, you know, affordable and accessible in that way, or you've been around for a while, or maybe you just want like the latest and greatest or something with all the frills, like you can, you can have that built for you and you can have that in a, a pre-completed package for you to just open up and go and play whether you need a battery for it or you you know just need to load up a mag and slap it in a springer and you're good to go like that that accessibility for the low end and high end is such a positive boon for this hobby and it's something that i want to see continue to be expounded on and grown because the more variety we have the better i feel like i say this all the time i like options i like variety so long story short here is while we may often celebrate the modders, the builders, the creators in this hobby, and rightfully so, they deserve it for the amazing work they do that is beyond me, let's not forget the people that fall into the other categories of this hobby because without all of us, our hobby stagnates and it fails to continue to grow. We're shifting and we have the potential to grow this hobby into something fantastic even more fantastic than I thought when I first got into it. And I hope that for people that are just discovering everything that's possible in here, you don't feel overwhelmed or you don't feel like you need to know how to do everything or uh, be able to do everything to be a valid member of the hobby community or to be an actual nerfer or whatever you want to call yourself, because that's not the case. If you enjoy one aspect of it, you're, you're part of this community and that's fantastic and I'm glad to have you here. One thought I have as a way to look at this is as long as it's not negatively impacting others in the hobby or causing harm to the community as a whole and the potential for growth or stability within it or you know actively do harm to others and things along those lines and you're just enjoying your hobby in your way then you're you're probably nerfing right and don't let others kind of push you to feel obligated to do something that you may not have the most interest in because you're enjoying it your way. This is just kind of a perspective video, I guess, something that's been on my mind for the last couple weeks and wanted to follow up on. So with that said, if you are new here and you enjoyed this, feel free to subscribe. I would love to have you um, and definitely leave any questions or thoughts down below. So that's enough out of me. I'm going to navigate my way out of here. See you all next time.